Hello, good morning. My name is Dr. Marwa Nehum. I would like to welcome you to the Libyan International Medical University's first Dental Scientific Day. Today, we will begin our opening ceremony with Dr. Sunusi Tahar's speech, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Dentistry. After that, the Vice Dean, Dr. Rafiq al Kawafi, will talk about Limo Faculty of Dentistry's experience of learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. After that, Dr. Min Amal Tarhouni, who is the head of the Limo COVID-19 committee, will talk about recommendations for healthcare professionals during the pandemic. I would like to talk about today's main sponsor, who is Silvercare, a pioneer in, a pioneer in dental health and oral healthcare products around the world. Uh, they are trusted by dental professionals and uh, patients from around the world for many generations. Uh, they will be talking about some of their products and they will be presenting the two winners of today's presentations with prizes. The students have been working long and hard for this day. The scientific committee have chosen two winners. They got many applications but two winners really stood out. The first winner of the Limo first dental scientific day is a presentation entitled Dental Anxiety Impact on Oral Health Related Quality of Life which was by two students, the Fatma, uh, Fatma Hadesh and Sara Bouchvidir. Second prize is a presentation by Aynour Al Maliki, which is called Anxiety, Depression and Stress among Libyan International Medical University Limo Dental Students. So I will leave you now with Dr. Sunu Sitar and his opening speech. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يشرفني ويسعدني باسم شخصي وباسم مجلس كلية الطب وجراحة الفم والأسنان في الجامعة الدولية أن أرحب بكم جميعا في اليوم العلمي لكلية لهذه الكلية التي تدخل العشرية الثانية لتأسيسها وقد تعززت مكانتها الإقليمية والمحلية كأحد الكليات المعتبرة والذي شكل تأسيسها واستمراريتها والنجاحات التي تحققها كل يوم والمستوى الراقي لخريجيها في مختلف الدفعات إضافة نوعية للتعليم طب الأسنان في ليبيا وفي المنطقة بما يعزز الممارسة المهنية الفاعلة لخريجي هذه الكلية لقد أثبت خريجو هذه الكلية مكانتهم المتميزة في تقديم الخدمات المميزة سواء في على المستوى المحلي أو المستوى العالمي لدينا خرجون يعملون في دول مختلفة في تركيا في لبنان في بريطانيا في كندا وفي دول عربية أخرى ينعقد هذا اليوم المؤتمر العلمي للكلية تحقيقا لرؤية الجامعة في نشر ثقافة البحث العلمي بين طلابها وخرجها 
الأساسيات البحث العلمي هي أحد متطلبات أو متطلب أساسي للتخرج من هذه الكلية في الدراسة الجامعية ويهدف إلى تسليح الطالب بأدوات البحث العلمي وفقا لمنهجية علمية نحن إن لم نكن الوحيدين فإننا من الأوائل الذين أدخلوا مادة البحث العلمي وأخلاقيات البحث العلمي ضمن المنهج التعليمي لهذه الكلية ويتولى تدريسه نخبة من أحسن وأفضل الأساتذة الهدف لأن إضافة إلى ما يتعلمه الطالب فيما يتعلق بالممارسة المهنية فإننا نتطلع إلى أن يكون لديه القدرة لأن يكون متعلما لمدى الحياة وباحثا نحن لا نخرج بغض النظر اشتغل في مؤسسة أكاديمية ككلية طب ككلية طب أسنان أو كليات أخرى أو اشتغل في القطاع الحكومي أو اشتغل في القطاع الخاص يظل القدرة على البحث العلمي والمساهمة في البحث العلمي خلال المؤتمرات العلمية والنشر في مجلات علمية ودوريات أحد الأشياء الأساسية التي ينبغي أن يتحلى بها الخريج ونحن حريصين على هذا بهذه المناسبة أتقدم بالشكر الجزيل لكل الطلاب الذين يساهمون ببحوث في هذا اليوم والشكر موصول إلى الزملاء من أعضاء التدريس الذين أشرفوا على إنجاز هذه البحوث ولعلها هذه تدفعنا أكثر إلى أن طلابنا وخرجينا يساهموا في إجراء بحوث أكثر عمقا وتفيد هذا المجتمع أتمنى التوفيق للجميع ونتطلع إلى مشاركتكم الفاعلة من خلال إبداء ملاحظاتكم على هذا اليوم شكرا لكم جميعا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I will leave you with a short video now by Silvercare who will introduce themselves and their products. Good evening to you and to everybody. I am Gobo Flavio from Sponsorificio Piave. Uh, let me give you a little uh, introduction about the company. The company is in the market since 160 years and is specialized in the production of oral care products. We, our range includes toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouthwash and dental flosses. And uh, we are working with supermarket and pharmacy chains in Italy and in many other countries. We are available in the Libyan market since uh, more or less one year, and we are cooperating with the company HRC, Health Reference Company, which is managed, located in Benghazi and managed by uh, Dr. Abdeladi Shoub. And uh, he's uh, attending to this congress in order to uh, promote the products and then and in order to make them available in the whole Libyan market. The items will be. Uh, sponsorized in, uh, in during the Congress by Doctor, uh, by Professor El Sanussi, Mr. Tyner, who is the Vice President of Dean of, of Faculty of Dentistry in Benghazi, and uh, we thank him uh, very much for his participation and his support in during this occasion. We have prepared a little presentation about our whole uh, assortment, and uh, the following are the slides concerning the presentation of these different products that we have uh, in our ranges. And for all information that you may need, you may contact the company HRC, Dr. Abdeladi, for getting all the information, prices, and eventual proposal for the distribution in the Libyan market. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to be uh, able to cooperate with your companies. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm going to introduce you today to Health Reference Company and our products. We are a Libyan pharmaceutical company for importing medicines and medical equipment. We've started our activity in 2017 and we're based in Benghazi, Libya. 
Our mission is to solve the problems of medical equipments in Libya and our values aligns with the customer's needs and satisfaction. We aspire to create a better and a healthier life for everybody. Our products are coming all the way from Spazolificio PAV, which is an Italian company which has started its work 160 years ago. The production was including all kinds of brushes. SPA has produced Silver Care, PAV, Dentonet, and Isodent, which are all made in Italy, ISO certified, in addition to their FDA approval. Silver Care toothbrushes have a very unique antibacterial silver plated head, and this action lasts for the whole lifespan of the toothbrush, unlike what we usually see for the traditional toothbrushes. There's a quality, there's a quality certification on each package satisfying price and eco-friendly. Here we can see how the Silver Care toothbrush has 99% less bacterial charge in 24 hours, unlike the traditional toothbrush. Silver Care 1 has a very unique replaceable head, an anatomic handle, and a balanced waste system. Here is a clearer picture of the replaceable head. Silver Care 1 can be sensitive, medium, or whitening. There's also a very special carbon Silver Care toothbrush for extra whitening. Silver Care Plus. It can be a soft toothbrush which has soft bristles with a degree of elasticity. The medium toothbrush which have medium structured bristles with interdental tuft for, for maximum cleaning and gum protection. The hard toothbrush which has hard whitening bristles which contain the calcium carbonate. Silver Care Pharma which can be medium to sensitive. The sensitive toothbrush has microfine bristles for ex to be extra gentle on the teeth. Silver Care H2O, which can be medium or orthodontic. The medium has depth cleaning for excellent plug removal, while the, uh, the orthodontic has a V-cut bristle, which allows protrusion of orthodontic braces and brackets. The interdental brushes are good for our orthodontic braces. They have a coated wire staff and a closing cap. They go from ultra fine to extra large. Silver care brushes for kids, which come in various shapes and sizes, in addition to very wonderful colors. Here we have the silver care toothpaste for children. The, the toothbrushes can be for infants or older kids. The Silver Care Flosses, which can be the waxed extra flat, fl flat floss, the fluoride and vitamin C, the natural antibacterial floss, or the multi active expanding whitening silica floss. The toothpaste can be a combined action gel, which is for maximum protection, the whitening toothpaste which leaves the teeth whiter and cleaner and the, and the toothpaste for sensitive gums which gently cleans the gums. The Silver Care Combined Action Mouth Rinse. The presence of the aloe vera guarantees soothing inflammation of gums in addition that it guarantees a fresh breath all day long. Our coming projects will include PAV Dentonet and Isodent, so stay tuned. And always keep in mind that we always make to, we always aim to make your lives healthier and happier. Thank you for your time today. Now, Dr. Rafik Al Kouafi will talk about Limu Faculty of Dentistry's uh, educational experience during the COVID-19 pandemic and then Dr. Min Amitar Honi, who is the head of the LIMU's COVID-19 committee, will talk about recommendations for healthcare professionals during the pandemic. 
الله الرحيم تكون البرزنتيشن نتاع اليوم في اليوم العلمي لكلية طب الأسنان بالجامعة الدولية إن شاء الله حول التعليم الطبي في الكلية أثناء أزمة الكوفيد 19 الانتر إدوكيشن اللي يمديرون كوفيد 19 دكتور رفيق محمد الكوافي وكيل الكليه وعضو التدريس ورئيس قسم في الكليه ورئيس وحده الدراسه والامتحانات في الكليه. نبدا البرزنتيشن ب الاوبجيكتيفز او الاوتلاينز عندي حنبدا نتكلم على الكوفيد 19 بانديميك وبعدها حنتكلم على البلان اللي درتها الكليه خلال الازمه. تاع الكورونا اللي كوفيد 19 خلال العام الدراسي والعام الاكاديمي 19 20 حنشوفوا شنو الصعوبات والعراقيل اللي كانت قدامنا وكيف تغلبنا عليها حنتكلم بعدها على التخطيط اللي درناه للعام الدراسي الحالي اللي هو المقبل وقتها كان اللي هو 2021 وحننتهي ببعض الكونكلوجن او الملخص وفي الاخر حنتكلم على على شنو المستفاد او تيك هوم مسج من من القصه بتاعت كورونا طبعا من 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 اكتشاف وباء او جائحه كورونا في في ديسمبر في شهر 12 2019 في ودين مدينه وهان الصينيه وقعد هذا الموضوع خبر اساسي وموضوع اهم موضوع يناقش على مستوى المجتمعات والحكومات وحتى على مستوى الامم المتحده وكان تاثيره مباشر على 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 حاجتين اكثر على ثلاث حاجات يعني اول حاجه على الصحه وبعدين على الاقتصاد وبعدها على التعليم يعني مفاصل الحياه في ثلاث حاجات مهمه اصبح هذا الموضوع الشغل الشغل والموضوع رقم واحد في العالم لعند يوم 15/11 لتو اللي فات هذا قبل كم يوم حسب موقع ال WHO منظمة الصحة العالمية عندنا 53 مليون إصابة مؤكدة كانت بفيروس كورونا في 220 دولة وتسببت في موت أو وفاة حوالي 1.3 مليون إنسان حول العالم. يعني ومازال مازال ومازال مستمر معدل الاصابه ومعدل الوفاه بشكل كبير في مختلف دول العالم عندنا وفي العالم طبعا احنا اول كيس اكتشفت في ليبيا عارفين انها كانت في 24 مارس 2020 طبعا وزاره التعليم الليبيه بشقيها اللي تابع الحكومه المؤقته والوفاق اصدرا يوم 13 و14 يعني قبل حتى ما تسجل بصراحه اول اصابه اصدرا تعليمات بتعليق الدراسه في ليبيا بسبب جائحه كورونا طبعا مباشره في نفس اليوم اللي صدر فيه القرار بصراحه كانت في استجابه سريعه جدا لمجلس مجلس الجامعه نتذكر حتى القرار صدر مساء اوكي يعني قرار صدر بتاع الوزاره صدر في الظهر او كذا في الصبح فعلى طول فكيف نفس اليوم مساء صدر قرار مجلس الجامعه بعد اجتماع طارئ بتعليق الدراسه في الجامعه الدوليه امتثالا لتعليمات وزاره التعليم الصادره. فكان يوم 14 تم تعليق الدراسه تعليق وليس ايقاف تعليق بمعنى ان حضور الطلبه للجامعه يعلق تمام تقليل عدد العاملين من اعضاء التدريس للموظفين في هذا الجامعه لاقل عدد ممكن يسمح بس لتشغيل المرافق الضروريه فقط في الجامعه. فطبعا الجامعه برضو في القرار بتاع تعليق الدراسه اقرت او اقرت او اصدرت تشريع او قرار بالبدء بالدراسه عن بعد. بحيث ما يكونش فيه اي تاخير ولا تعطيل في برنامج الدراسه فابتدا مباشره برنامج الدراسه عن بعد انطلبت من الكليات بالاستعداد والتجهيز للدراسه عن بعد. بالنسبه لنا في الكليه ثاني يوم بالضبط اجتمع مجلس الكليه اجتماع طارئ وقررنا في الاجتماع هذا عده توصيات او عده قرارات كان اولها اختيار افضل برنامج لاجراء محاضرات عن بعد او اونلاين فاخترنا برنامج الزوم هذا طبعا تطبيق عالمي مستعمل في جميع دول العالم 
وقمنا بتلخيص النسخة الخاصة بزوم يعني النسخة مرقصة معناها فيها ميزات أكثر تسمح لك بإجراء محاضرات بدون تحديد للوقت النسخة المجانية طبعا تعطيك حوالي 45 دقيقة وبعدها يفصل البرنامج ويسكر فطبعا من من اول يوم ما اعتمدنا برنامج زوم قمنا بترخيص النسخه الموجوده عندنا بحيث تعطينا اكثر صلاحيات اكثر ونستفيد منها بالطريقه المثلى. وابتدات الدراسه لطلبه السنه الثالثه والرابعه والخامسه من طب الاسنان طبعا عندنا السنه الاولى والثانيه هذين الطلبه يدرسوا في كليه العلوم التطبيقيه وحتى هم طبعا اتبعوا بنفس الاجراءات. فطبعا اول حاجه برنامج يعني قمنا بها نبعثنا رابط تحميل برنامج زوم للطلبه ولاعضاء التدريس وبعدها درت تدريب سريع للمشرفين التعليميين اللي معنا اللي هم مسؤولين على السنوات الدراسيه ولبعض اعضاء التدريس على كيفيه استعمال برنامج الزوم وهم من ثم قاموا بتدريب الطلبه وباقي اعضاء التدريس على استعمال برنامج بطريقه عنقوديه بحيث ايش؟ بحيث انه يتم الامر هذا باسرع وقت ممكن ما ناخذوش فيه فتره طويله ونبدو المحاضرات. هذا طبعا طبعا بالاضافه لبرنامج الزوم اللي هو تم تم اعتماده كبرنامج للدراسه عن بعد نحن اوريدي عندنا في الجامعه الدوليه يعني من بدايه الفتحة الجامعه عندنا اشتراك الجامعه في برنامج المود، المود هذه منظومه دراسيه متكامله تسمح بتحميل المحاضرات، باجراء الامتحانات بمختلف انواعها، بنشاطات الطلبه الالكترونيه، فكانوا طلبتنا اوريدي يعني متعودين وهذا اللي يشتغلوا به من سنه اولى على منظومه المودل، فكان عمليه الشفت او التحول من الدراسه التقليديه الى الى الدراسه عن بعد، ما كانش في صعوبه واجد، الاستيعاب كان سريع. الاختلاف الوحيد بس هو اجراء المحاضرات اونلاين بدل اجراءها داخل المقر الجامعه، اما باقي المحاضرات وتحميل الروابط اللينكات او الروابط للمواقع الالكترونيه التعليميه، الكتب، كل شيء كان موجود اوريدي اصلا سابقا موجود على برنامج المودل، وكل طالب عنده طبعا ايميل تصدر له الجامعه تسمح له بالدخول وكلمه سر يدخل بها على المودل ويدخل على حسابه ويقدر يدير جميع الانشطه اللي مطلوبه منه. هذا طبعا سكرين شوت للمودل منظومه المودل طبعا هي رابط الموضوعه المنتشره طبعا على الانترنت يقدر الطالب في بيته بعد ما يدخل كلمه السر وكذا يقدر يدخل على الحساب بتاعه مثلا هذا كان في اثناء الامتحانات لسنه ثالثه الطالب يدخل ويلقى الامتحان موجود طبعا محدد التايم بتاعه امتى يفتح امتى يسكر هذا حنتكلم عليه شويه اخرى وهذا طبعا برنامج الزوم كان شوف تلاحظوا انا دنت الفاكتي جنبها لايسند يعني معناها مدفوع الاشتراك مدفوع بحيث نتحصلوا على كافه المزايا. رابع حاجه قمنا طبعا باجراء بتجهيز الجداول الدراسيه والتنسيق مع اعضاء التدريس في كيفيه القاء المحاضرات وطبعا هذا اثبات للكلام اللي نحكوا فيه ان هذا طبعا بوست خاص بالجامعه موقع الجامعه في يوم 16 مارس شوفوا نحن طبعا الوزاره اصدر قرار بتعليق الدراسه يوم 14 13 14 يوم 16 بديت اوريدي وبدا طقم التدريس وعضاء التدريس عندنا في الكليه باجراء اول محاضره كانت تمهيديه وشرح لاستعمال المنظومه وشرح للطلبه على كيف حتكون خطه الدراسه وهذا قمت بها في يوم 16 مارس يعني بعد يومين مباشرة من تعليق الدراسة عشان ما نضيعوش وقت. طبعا المحاضرات هذينا كيف ما قاعد تو نستعمل برنامج زوم وقاعد ندير في ريكورد. المحاضرات هذينا كنا نعطوا في المحاضرات ويتم تسجيلها ورفعها على الجوجل درايف اللي خاص بالجامعة وبعدين تعتبر يعني يتم تحميلها كرابط في الموديل والطالب يقدر اللي فتت عليه المحاضرة يقدر يحضر محاضرة في أي وقت لأن طبعا برضو الفترة ديك عارفين كان في عندنا واجد مقاطعات في النت والكهرباء فما كانت المحاضرة موجودة في أي وقت متاحة للطالب أنه يرجع لها. طبعا قاموا أغلب أعضاء التدريس اللي تم تدريبهم على استعمال الزوم قاموا بإجراء محاضرات داخل منازلهم في بيوتهم محافظة على التباعد وكذا. في بعض منهم طبعا كانت عنده مشاكل في الكهرباء ونت فوفرنا لهم غرفه بحيث يقعد في الغرفه وحده و... ويقدر يعطي المحاضره من خلال القدوم الى مقر الجامعه. طبعا بالنسبه لنا احنا كاعضاء تدريس وكعاملين موظفين في الكليه يعني كنا من 15 20 موظف او عضو تدريس او 18 
ما كانش يحضر فقط الا اثنين او ثلاثه بالكثير ثلاثه وفق الجدول بالترتيب يعني على كل مره يجي الدور على حد بحيث نقلل العدد حسب تعليمات مجلس الجامعه وتوصيات مجلس الكليه. طبعا كجزء عارفين احنا الاونلاين ولا التعليم عن بعد صعب انه يدير لك تدريب مهارات يعني سريريه او معمليه تستعيد عليه بمثلا الفيديوهات ونصوروا فيديوهات داخل الكليه ونحملوهن على شرح على بعض الاجراء الحاجات المعمليه ولا السريريه او نعطوا في لينكات لحاجات موجوده اوريدي في منظومات تعليميه في النت من دول اخرى وكذا ومن جامعات ثانيه بحيث تشوف الطلبه طبعا هو هذا ما يعتبرش كافي لكن برضه هذا عامل مساعد يساعد حتى على على فهم الجزء النظري لان طبعا في جزء نظري واجد عندنا مربوط بجزء عملي فعلا نقرب الفهم لا فقمنا بتحميل فيديوهات توضيحيه لبعض الانشطه في نفس الفتره برضه درنا درنا دراسه وما زالت قائمه الدراسه هذه على ان نستطلعوا في اراء الطلبه واحساسهم وتقبلهم بفكره الاونلاين او التعليم عن بعد مقارنة بالتعليم التقليدي وان شاء الله حنحاول ننشروها ونشوف النتائج بتاعها. طبعا كان عندنا اجتماعات متكرره كمجلس كليه سواء بالحضور او كان اغلب اونلاين يعني على تطورات العمليه التعليميه وكان في اي صعوبات كيف ممكن نحلوهن. كملنا جميع المتطلبات الدراسيه النظريه كملناهن في يعني في شهر 6 تقريبا كنا من شهر 3 الى شهر 6 كنا مكملين مكملين يعني كل المقررات النظريه كنا كانت كامله ما ننسوش برضو ان احنا بدينا الدراسه في شهر 10 طبيعي بدينا في 2019 قبل قصه كورونا فالطلبه راهو جرو في الكليه لعند شهر مارس يعني الطلبه عندي جرو حوالي خمس شهور ونص فكانوا يعني بنسبه كبيره حوالي 60% من او 70% في بعض المواد كان اوريدي سواء عملي ولا نظري ولا سريري كان اوريدي كان كامل وعوضنا بس نحن الاونلاين الجزء النقصي يعني من بالكثير بالكثير كان يكون ربع او ثلث المنهج. فتو قعدنا نفكر في الموضوع كورونا طول طبعا وما كانش في رؤيه واضحه كيف حيكون الوضع فقررنا قلنا مش حنخلوا الموضوع مفتوح الى ما لا نهايه فنحن لازم نديروا الامتحانات بتاعنا النهائيه الدور الاول في وقت لان جائحه كورونا مش واضح ان في حاجه وقتها ان ان بتوقف في تاريخ معين. فبدينا من 11 7 لحد 13 8 درنا جميع امتحانات الدور الاول والحمد لله كان يعني على نفس الاجنده اللي كنت وضعها في شهر 9 2019 للدراسه قبل قصه كورونا اصلا كان الامتحانات حيكون في شهر 7 فالفرق عندنا بس حوالي 13 يوم اللي هي دخلنا في شهر 8 يعني ما كانش في اي تاخير في العام الدراسي يذكر وكل الامور مشت في وقت حسب المخطط طبعا الامتحانات كيف تم اجراهن؟ تم اجراهن اونلاين في الطلبه في بيوتهم طبعا البروتوكول هذا مش اخترعنا نحن هذا بروتوكولات لاجراء امتحانات اونلاين موخوده من جامعات يعني اوروبيه وامريكيه كيف يتم الطريقه؟ كيف يتم الاشراف؟ طبعا الطالب كان لازم ينزل برنامج اسمه سيف اكزام براوزر، البرنامج هذا يسكر اللابتوب بتاعه في الحوش ما يخليش يقدر يفتح الا على صفحه الامتحان فقط الموجوده على المود اللي هو داخل بالباسورد اللي هو جميع الطلبه قاعدين اندر ماي كنترول نقدر انا نتحكم نشوف في كل طالب وين قاعد في اي سؤال وشين قاعد يحل وكذا المود هذا يسمح لك باجراء امتحانات باي صيغه تبيها مقاليه مالتيبل تشويس اختياريه صح وغلط يعني كل شيء تقدر تديره فيه طبعا كنا نسكره في اجهزه الطلبه عن طريق سيف اكزام براوزر الطالب اصلا ما يقدرش يدخل الامتحان الا لازم يشغل سيف اكزام براوزر حيث نضمن ان هو ما يقدرش يدير اي محاوله غش يفتح لي صفحه ثانيه ينقل من الكمبيوتر طبعا هذا ما كانش يقدر بنفس الوقت فيه كاميرا اللي هو الموبايل قاعد يراقب فيه مراقب حطيت مشرف حوالي خمسه خمس طلبه مشرف عليهم مشرف تعليمي يراقب فيهم كل حركه كل كذا يطلب ممكن في اي لحظه من اي طالب يقول له خذ الموبايل وريني الكمبيوتر ارفع الكمبيوتر اشوف وريني الدار مسكره كذا يعني طبعا هذا كله يعني درنا عليه تدريب وهذا خذيناه من البروتوكولات المتبعه خصوصا في جامعات امريكيه بنفس الاسلوب بحيث لمنع اي محاوله لغش الطالب وطبعا يعني كانت يعني كانت الطريقه فعاله جدا 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 يعني كانت عندنا خروقات لا تذكر بسيطه جدا تم التغلب عليها وبرضه كانت عندنا مشكله في بعض الطلبه اللي هم 
تكرر يطفي الضي الفتره ذيك كان يطفي الضي بصوره عارفين كلنا في بنغازي بصوره يعني مستمره يخ... يطفى بال 8 ساعات ومرات بال 12 ساعه فطبعا هذا حتى الطالب اللي شاحن اللابتوب والله كذا يواجه صعوبه انه مرات يفصل عليه الضي المهم فطبعا في اثناء الامتحانات اي وقت طالب كان قبل مشكله ما يقدرش يدير لها حل كان لازم يجي للجامعه حيوقف وين ما هو ويكمل امتحان في الجامعه في الجامعة طبعا وفرنا قاعتين كبار يتقبلا عدد من الطلبة راعينا فيها طبعا وسائل التباعد ولبس الماسك وكل شيء بالنسبة حسب البروتوكول وأصلا هم كانوا الطلبة يتوجههم مشاكل يكونوا حوالي 5% من عدد الطلبة الكلي اللي هم يمتحنوا ال 95% كانوا يمتحنوا في بيوتهم عادي جدا فنحن كانوا يجونا 3 4 5 في أقصى شيء ممكن يجونا 10 12 طالب وكنا وممكن أكثر بشوية في يوم أو يومين فطبعا هذا قدرنا نوزعوه في قاعات مراعاة التباعد متر ونص واثنين متر لبس الماسك واستعمال الكتلين يعني ما كانش فيه والحمد لله يعني ما 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 فيش حاجه سجلت بسبب اصابه او كذا او عدوى بسبب اجراء الامتحانات. طبعا الجزء النظري تغلبنا عليه عن طريق اعطاء المحاضرات اونلاين، لكن في جزء العملي درجات مثلا احنا عندنا امتحانات درجه الماده فيها شق عملي وشق او سرير وشق نظري، شق نظري هذا سهل درنا امتحانات اونلاين، الجزء العملي منين نجيب درجته؟ فدار الحمد لله نحن كنا مشتغلين الطلبه اوريدي حوالي خمس شهور ونص، يعني 75% من المطلوب منهم المتطلبات الدراسيه العمليه والسريريه كانت اوريدي مديوره، فنحن خذينا درجات الجزء اللي هو تم اعطائها فعلا او تم انجازها فعلا هو اللي حملنا عليه الدرجه اللي هي خاصه بالجزء العملي والسري. طبعا كل الامتحانات الحمد لله اندار بنجاح وما كانش فيه مشاكل تذكر من ناحيه قصه نقل عدوى ولا في مشاكل يعني الحمد لله مشت الامور امتحانات الدور الاول تمام. خذينا طبعا اعطينا الطلبه راحه ويعني فتره انه يراجعوا فيها وكذا طلعنا النتائج بالنسبه في شهر 8 شهر باقي شهر 8 هذا كان يعني فتره راحه حوالي ثلاث اسابيع الطلبه يستعدوا فيها بالنسبه اللي ما حلفهمش الحظ في الدور الاول والدور الثاني بدا في 1 9 لعند 30 9 بنفس الكيفيه تم امتحانات الدور الثاني وطلعت النتيجه و وبدينا نستعد تو للعام الدراسي الجديد طبعا ال ال الديفيكولتي والاوبستكلز الصعوبات والعراقي اللي واجهتنا في واجهه العمليه تسير العمليه التعليميه خلال ازمه او خلال جائحه كورونا. آه النقاط كانت اول حاجه بصراحه الانفراستراكشر هي البنيه التحتيه للمشكله اللي عندنا. آه يعني العالم نسين فكره انه ضي يطفى نحن طبعا هذا يعني قعدنا نحن مش عندنا بس الصعوبات اللي لها علاقه بالاونلاين اكزامز والامتحانات الاونلاين والدراسه عن بعد لا نحن مضاف عليه ثقل على عاهلنا اخرى قصة البنية مشاكل البنية التحتية ضي ينقطع بالساعات انترنت ماهوش منتظم منضرب كيبل في منطقة فلانية يقطع النت على على بنغازي لمدة يوم يومين دور بدائل للنت فطبعا هذا كان عندنا مشكلة كبيرة زائد ان بعض الستودنت والستاف مش كلهم كان عندهم لابتوب ولا ولا تابلت اللوحية هذين الاجهزة اللوحية بحالة جيدة او متوفرة فطبعا هذا كان في عائق في البدايه طبعا برضه حتى مش كل الناس استوعبت في البدايه كيفيه استعمال البرامج الزوم وكذا بس هذين كلنا نقدر نقول باستثناء البنيه التحتيه الثلاثه واربعه هذين كانت مشاكل في البدايه وبعدين تم التغلب عليه طبعا برضه ما قلنا في بعض الناس كانت تضطر تجي هنا تعطي في المحاضرات من هنا من اعضاء التدريس وبرضه كان يستوجب لنا وجود يعني وجود حد معاهم يعني فكنا محتاجين ان يجي اثنين ثلاثه يكونوا متواجدين في مقر الجامعه طبعا هذا برضه حتى هو كان يعني عائق يعني الناس في الفتره كانت كلها متخوفه وكذا لكن برضه من من عدد كبير احنا بس كنا نجيبه في واحد ولا اثنين ماكسيموم ثلاثه يكونوا قاعدين بحيث يجي ينظموا عمليه الاونلاين او الديستنت لا طبعا قلنا ان المحاضرات كانت تنعطى من المنازل سوى عدوى التدريس يعطي فيها المحاضره من من بيتها والطلبه في بيوتهم القصه هذه ما كانش يتم صباحا بس صباحا ومساء وفي الليل عدوى التدريس يقول لك انا نفضى في الليل نعطي المحاضره فطبعا المشرفين التعليمين والستاف يعني ارهقوا بالقصه هذه هذا كانت واحده من الصعوبات يعني زمان الدوام مثلا العمل من 8 ل 3 ونص 4 
تو لقى روحه من الثمانية اللي عند الساعة 11 و 12 في الليل قاعد يشتغل وينظف المحاضرات وكذا، كانت مرهقة بصراحة للمشرف خصوصا للمشرفين التعليميين اللي عندنا بصراحة داروا مجهود كبير جدا 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 لإنجاح دراسة عن بعد في الجامعة. برضه طبعا في بعض السنين الطلبة اشتكوا من قصة التكاليف الزيادة في قصة النت والتحميل واستعمال زوم برامج زوم وكذا، هذه طبعا يستهلك من الحصة الشهرية بتاع النت. فطبعا كان في بعض شكوى من القصة هذه. برضه كان نحاولوا احنا قدر الامكان المحاضرات يكون فتره صباحيه لان عارفين كنا النت في الفتره الصبح يكون اسرع لكن في طلبه واجد تعودوا على السهر في الفتره هذه قاعدين في حواشينهم اربع شهور خمس شهور فطبعا تعودوا على السهر وقعدوا صعوبه عندهم انه ينوض الساعه 9 وكذا فطبعا هذه حتى برضه دارت مشكله شويه طبعا برضو هو هذا طبعا خلل في قصه الديستنت ليرنينج ان هو يعطيك ممكن جزء نظري يعطيك شويه مهارات تشوفهم لكن ما فيش تدريب عملي يعني فعليا يعني احنا لولا ما كناش ريد الطلبه كانوا حوالي 75 75% من المتطلبات العمليه والسريريه كانت اوريدي مديوره كانت حتواجهنا مشكله في قصه التدريب العملي تمام فطبعا الديستنت ليرنينج ولا التعليم عن بعد ولا اونلاين يعطيك جزء نظري كويس لكن الجزء العملي ولا السريري هذا طبعا صعب لان الطالب لازم يشتغل بيده. نحن الحمد لله يعني السنه دي زي ما قلت لك 75% تقريبا كنا نهيناه اوريدي في قبل ما يتم تعليق الدراسه. الجزء اللي فاضل هذا اوريدي استدركناه تو لما بدينا العام الدراسي الجديد عوضنا الطلبه في الجزئيه اللي قبل ما نبدو في المقررات الجديده بتاع السنه هي الحاليه عوضناهم في الجزء اللي هو ما كانوش واخدينا او التدريب اللي ما كانوش واخدينا بينما هم بدوا في اول شهر هذا استوفينا المتطلبات اللي كانت المفروض يندرى من قبل. شو المخطط بتاعنا لسنه للعام الدراسي الجديد اللي هو الحالي هو 2021 طبعا احنا بدينا الدراسه نظامي كيف اي سنه يوم 10 10 السبت 10 10 2020 بدينا الدراسه نظمنا جميع الجداول الدراسيه طبعا هذا بعد اجتماع طبعا مجلس الكليه ومناقشه الخطه الدراسيه الجديده طبعا حسب تعليمات الجامعه مجلس الجامعه انها حتكون الدراسه اونلاين بالنسبه للجزء النظري ومراعاه التباعد والتقليل الاعداد بالنسبه للجزء العملي اللي هو في المعامل في سنه ثالثه او في العياده للتدريب السريري في سنه رابعه وخمسه. بالنسبة لل زي ما قلنا المجموعات بتاع المعامل قللنا الاعداد فيها لاقل لل... عدد ممكن وطبقنا جميع الطرق الخاصة ب الوقاية والحماية حسب توصيات اللجنة العليا لمكافحة كورونا في في ليبيا يعني وحسب حتى اللجنة الفرعية اللي خاصة بمكافحة كورونا لطب الاسنان اللي هي مشكلة من اللجنة العليا فطبعا اي طلب طالب او عضو او يعني موظف وعضو تدريس يعني يشوف بين عليه اي اعراض من الدفع الاعراض اللي عارفينها بالنسبه للكورونا كذا فطبعا هنا لازم يتوقف عن العمل او عن الدراسه بالنسبه للطالب لحد ما يدير الانفستيجيشن بتاع التحاليل اللازمه وكذا اللي هي تثبت خلوه او اصابته وتطبيق الحجر الصحي المطلوب. برضه نحن تطبيقا لتعليمات اللجنه الفرعيه اللي خاصه بطب الاسنان المشكله من اللجنه العليا لمكافحه كورونا في ليبيا اللي هي طبعا في بعض بروتوكول نزلت بروتوكول كويس ونحن ماشيين عليه، في بعض طبعا العلاجات او كذا اللي تندر في العياده اللي يترتب عليها رداد واجد يطلع من الاجهزه استعمال اجهزه الاسنان وكذا، فطبعا هذه وقفناها او اجلناها تو لحين تحسن الوضع الوبائي في البلاد. فطبعا هذه حسب التعليمات وقفناها. آه الامتحانات طبعا حنديروهم على الاقتصاد ما نقدروا طبعا اونلاين اوكي آه ممكن اونلاين داخل الجامعه بمراعاه التباعد او اونلاين داخل المنازل باستخدام المراقبه عن طريق الموبايلات وكذا آه برضو آه انا آه انا اقترحت في مجل اجتماع مجلس الجامعه الاخير اقترحت فكره آه اجراء الزوم انيبل رومز او الروم آه او الغرف الدراسيه المجهزه بالبرنامج زوم هي فكره بسيطه يعني نحن وجدنا حتى بعض يعني امتعاض او كذا من بعض اعضاء التدريس ان الناس وانا واحد منهم صراحه يعني تعودنا ان نعطف محاضره وقدامنا الطلبه وفي تفاعل مباشر مش مش وراء السكرينز والشاشات بتاعت الكمبيوترات وكذا فهذه تحس كان في حاجه ناقصه يعني تمام ونفس الشيء الطلبه حتى هم يعني افتقدوا جو انه ياخذ محاضره في قاعه محاضرات هوني فهم في حاجه في الوسط تصير انها تجهز محاضره ببرنامج زوم او برنامج جوجل ميت على حسب البرامج المعتمده 
الفكره فيها ان نجيب عينه من الطلبه يعني مثلا دفعه فيها 60 طالب نقدر نجيب 8 طلبه او 10 طلبه ماكسيمم في قاعه نراعي فيها التباعد حجمها معقول ويبقى عضو التدريس مع 10 طلبه فقط والباقي ال 50 طالب هذوما حيبقوا متابعين على الزوم كانه يطف محاضره على الزوم عادي جدا على البرنامج الفكره اللي فيها ان العضو التدريس حيبقى يتفاعل مع طلبه قدامه الطلبه اللي في المنازل يبقوا يحسوا في جو كانه كيف جو المحاضره زياده عن انه هو حيجي عليهم الدور يعني كل مره ناخذوا 10 بحيث حد كلهم حيمروا بانهم يقدروا يجوا يحضروا المحاضره ونفس الوقت راعينا التقليل العدد والتباعد وهذه ما تبيش متطلبات واجدا يعني قابله للتطبيق وطبقت بدات تطبق عندنا في الجامعه هنا هي حل الوسط ما بين المحاضره العاديه والمحاضره عن بعد وهذه طبعا الفكره تجهيز الزوم اني بالدرونز يعني مثلا تكون في عندي كاميرا عاليه الجوده في بحيث تنقل دغري برنامج الزوم في عندي هنا لقط صوت اللي هو على البوديوم اللي هو على المنصه او لقط صوت اللي هو تعلق تعليق اضافه في لقط يكون في السطح اللي هو عشان مجموعه الطلبه اللي موجودين هذوما العشره ولا الثمانيه ولا الخمسه لما حد يسال ولا كذا الطلبه اللي في المنازل عن طريق الزوم يبقوا يسمعوا فيهم وهذه طبعا الكاميرا تلقط ونشر على السبوره زائد اننا نستعمل برضه في الشاشه كيف ما نستعمل فيها تونا على السكرين مباشره الملخص آه ان طبعا الكوفيد 19 بانديميك هذا هذا يعني اثر في العالم كله آه لدرجه ان حوالي 1.6 مليار آه طالب او متعلم في العالم تباعد عن الدراسه نتاعها في 190 آه 190 دوله وهذا اثر في نسبه 99% او اوقف الدراسه في 99% من الطلبه داخل الدول الناميه والمتوسط الدخل وحوالي 94% في الدول المتقدمه يعني نجي ندعو على امريكا ولا اوروبا ولا كذا 94% من الطلبه توقفوا عن توقفوا عن الدراسه يعني مؤخرا كيف بدوا يردوا اونلاين ويردوا يعني يردوا للدراسه باستعمال البريكوشنز واستعمال التحذيرات وكذا وهذا طبعا مش كلامنا نحن هذا كلام اليو ان اللي هو اليونايتد نيشن بوليسي بريف النشره اللي تصدر فيها اليونايتد نيشن وهذه اخر وحده صدرت بتاريخ في نص تقريبا نص شهر 8 2020 8 اللي فات فالحجم المشكله كبير جدا يعني واحلم فيه دول العالم متقدمه واجهتها صعوبات يعني نقدر نقول احنا الانجاز اللي درناه هذا كان يعني كان والله شيء يفخر به الواحد يعني بامانه يعني ان احنا استطعنا استكمال الدراسه الطلبه واجراء امتحانات نهائيه وتطبيع النتائج ودور الدور ثاني وتنظيم العام الاكاديمي الجديد يعني انا نعرفه عن طريق اطلاع يعني انا في جامعات في امريكا اللي عندها تو ما زالت ما استكملتش العام الدراسي 19 20 في امريكا مش في في دول ناميه تمام فهذا طبعا هذا طبعا مجهود مشترك مش مجهود حد فردي يعني هذا مجهود من عماده كليه وليس الجامعه لمجلس كليه لاعضاء التدريس لل للطلبه للمشرفين التعليميين بصراحه اللي هم كان هم الدور الكبير جدا او النصيب الكبير جدا من المجهود والشغل في انجاح استمرار واستكمال الدراسه في العام الاكاديمي اللي فات. اخر حاجه نتكلم عليها تيك هوم مسج طبعا اهم شيء في الموضوع هذا يعني قبل الدراسه يجي اللي هو الحمايه الشخصيه السيفتي والحمايه والسلامه الشخصيه هذه اهم من اي شيء هذه تجي رقم واحد في اي معادله سواء معادله تعليم معادله اقتصاد معادله صحه يعني الصحه هذه يعني السلامه النفسيه والصحه النفسيه هذه هي اهم اهم شيء ما ننسوش ان يعني شفنا تراخي شويه صار في قصه التباعد ولبس ارتداء الكمامات وكذا فهذه لازم الواحد الكورونا ما زال موجود ما فيش لا علاج لعند تو في اخبار جيده على قصه التطعيم على ما يوصلك التطعيم هذا ممكن في نهايه 2021 يبقى نحن ما زلنا مستمرين مفروض بقصه التباعد واستعمال الباريرز اللي هن البيرسونال بروتكتيف ايكوبمنت اللي هو الماسك والحاجات هذينا فطبعا انا يعني اكيد حيكون العام الاكاديمي 2021 هذا عام اكاديمي مش تقليدي ان يوجوال اكاديميك يير كتبها تمام حيكون فيه قرارات مختلفه تنسيقات مختلفه ايجاد بدائل بروتوكولات للسلامه وهذه طبعا ما هنش ثابته حتى لان لنا علاقه بالوضع الوبائي ما نعرفوش هل نحن حن ممكن ممكن تعلق الدراسه اخرى لو صار لا قدر الله فيه انتشار جديد لموجه ثانيه نسمع عليها وكذا فطبعا هذا هايبرد هايبرد يعني قابل للتغيير على حسب الوضع ف فنحن هنا السنه الدراسيه هذه 19 20 21 حتكون مش تقليديه وان شاء الله يعني حتمر بخير وبنجاح وبسلامه على الجميع ان شاء الله 
ونشكركم ونحن لو كان خديت وقت ازيد من المطلوب وان شاء الله كلكم تكونوا بصحه وعافيه شكرا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله معكم دكتور عبد المنعم علي عبد النبي Head of Pedodontic Orthodontic and Preventive and Community Dentistry Department at Faculty of Dentistry at Libya International Medical University. This presentation will be under the title The Idea Recommendation for Dental Health Care Practitioners During Pandemic COVID-19. At the end of this presentation, we should be able to describe what's meaning by COVID-19 disease, list the most and less common symptoms of COVID-19 should be able to describe the prevalence of COVID-19 worldwide and regionally in Libya specifically. We should be able to describe the ideal setting that should be done before and during the starting of dental practices. We should be able to list the ideal recommendations when dealing with patients with COVID-19 positive. Should be able also to illustrate the recommended sequence for dunning and duffing personal protective equipment. So what's COVID-19? COVID-19 is an infectious disease that's caused by most recently discovered coronaviruses. This new viruses and disease were unknown before the outbreak began in Wuhan, in China in December 2019. It's now a pandemic affecting many countries globally. According to the WHO, the World Health Organization, COVID-19 affecting different people in different ways. Most infected people will be develop mild to moderate illness and recovery without hospitalizations. There are different symptoms for COVID-19 disease, which is the most common symptom is fever, dry, cough, tiredness. But also there are less common symptoms like loss of taste and smell, sore throat, diarrhea. Globally, in 11th of November 2020, there have been more than 15 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, which include more than 1 million reported deaths. Regionally in Libya, until 11th of November 2020, there have been more than 70,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, with 937 deaths, which reported to the World Health Organization. There are different settings that should be done before starting the dental practices. We should provide and provide supplies for respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. The alcohol-based hand trap with at least 60% of alcohol. We should provide also tissues and non-touch receptacles for disposal of used tissues at different places that include healthcare facility, entrance, waiting rooms, and patient check-ins. We should also install a physical barrier, example, a glass or a plastic window at reception area to limit a close contact between the patient and the receptionists, which that decrease the transmissions of microbes from the patient to the receptionist and vice versa. We should also run social distance in waiting rooms so patients can sit at least one and a half to two meters apart. We should also remove all toys, magazines, and other frequently touched objects from waiting rooms that cannot be regularly cleaned and disinfected. We should also provide a visual alert at the entrance places and in waiting rooms and elevators to provide instructions in appropriate language about hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, and cough etiquette. When we starting the dental practices, all dental health care practitioners should wear a surgical face mask at all times while they are in dental setting. All dental health care practitioners should implement the use of universal eye protections, goggles, face shield that cover the front and side of the face, in addition to the surgical mask, to ensure eyes, nose, and mouth are all protected from exposure to any respiratory secretions. We should request that the patient should limit the number of visitors accompanying him or her to the dental appointment to only those people who are accessory. We should also ask patients and anyone accompanying them to the appointment to wear a face mask before entering the facility. There are exceptions in wearing face masks for patients under age two and anyone who have trouble in breathing and also for any unconscious patients or any handicapped patients that cannot remove uh, the face mask without assistance. We should screen everyone entering the healthcare facility for any fevers or any symptoms associated with COVID-19. 
patient should also put the face mask again before they leaving the dental apartments. Scheduling the appointment to minimize the number of people in waiting area. Patient may optionally waiting outside in clinic where they can be contacted by mobile phone when, when it is their turn for dental care. Recommended infection preventions and control practices when providing dental health care for patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 infection. All non-emergency treatment should be delayed until the patient recovery from COVID-19. If emergency dental care is medically necessary for a patient who has or suspected of having COVID-19, then All services must be delivered using appropriate personal protective equipment. We should give the patient face mask to cover his or her nose and mouth. All dental treatment should be provided in an individual patient's rooms with a closed door. The number of dental health care practitioners present during the procedure should be limited to only those necessary for patient care and procedure support. Dental health care practitioners in the room should wear in 95 or equivalent respirator, as well as eye protections, goggle or face shield that cover the front and side of the face. We should also wear gloves and gown. Avoid aerosolic generating procedure whenever possible, including the use of high-speed hand bees, air water syringe, and ultrasonic scalers. Do it as minimally invasive as traumatic restorative dentistry as possible as we can. If aerosolic generation procedures are necessary for the, for the procedures, so use for handed dentistry, high evacuation sections, and dental rubber dams to minimize droplets, butters, and aerosol. We should limit the transportations of the patients and dental staff from the patient rooms to any other apartment. We should consider scheduling that the patient at, at the end of the day, and don't schedule any other patient at that time. To clean and disinfect the dental operator after the patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19, dental health care practitioners should delay entry to the operators until the sufficient time has elapsed for enough air change to remove potential infectious particles. The recommended sequence for dunning and duffing personal protective equipment. We should perform hand hygiene. We should wash our hands with soap and water for at least 20 to 40 seconds or use hand sanitizers. We should put on clean gowns or protective clothing that cover the personal clothing and skin, examples for our. We should put on a surgical mask or respirator. We should put on eye protections. We should note that goggles or face shield that cover the front and side of the face. We should put on eye protections, goggles or face shield that cover the front and side of the face. We should not, we should not that, we should not that protective eyewear with gap between glasses and face likely don't protect our eyes from all splashes and space. We should put in non-sterile gloves, except if we performed a surgical procedure, we should, then we should put a surgical gloves. Now we can enter the patient's room or care area. After recompletion of dental care, we should remove the gloves firstly and then remove the gown and protective clothing and discard them in biohazard special container. Exit the patient room or care area. We should perform a hand hygiene for at least 20 seconds. Now we can remove the eye protections. We carefully remove the eye protections by grabbing the strap and pulling apart and away from our heads. We should not touch the front of the eye's protections. We should clean and disinfect reservable eye protections after its use. Now we can remove and discard surgical mask, but we should note that don't touch the front of the respirators or mask. Finally, we should perform a hand hygiene for at least 20 to 40 seconds. In conclusion, COVID-19 is infectious disease that affecting different people in different ways. As most infected people develop mild to moderate illness, we should treat all patients in dental clinic as an infectious patient. All services must be delivered using appropriate personal protective equipment. This is our references. Thank you.
Now, the students will present the poster and the scientific presentations. Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Aymar al Melki and today I'm going to talk about something that is often neglected by our society, which is student mental health and psychological well-being. More specifically, today I'm going to talk about an anxiety, depression and stress among Libyan International Medical University dental students. It's a well-known fact that dental education can be a source of stress. Actually, a large part of the literature has shown that stress is increased and intensified during the study years of dental students. And we all also know that how stress can affect our health, especially its role, how it can reduce our immunity system. But today we're going to talk about how it can affect our mental health. Stress have been linked to the development of other disorders. There is study was done in Switch have proved that high level of stress is associated with depression, while continuous moderate to low level of stress are associated with anxiety. But what is an anxiety? An anxiety is defined by American Psychological Association as emotional characterized by feeling of tension, worried thoughts, and physical change such as increased blood pressure. An anxiety is also associated with autonomical arousal skeletal muscle effect as if dentists and dental students doesn't have enough problem with muscle skeletal effect already. On the other hand, depression is defined by World Health Organization as a common mental disorder characterized by sadness, loss of interest or pleasure, feeling of guilt or low self-worth, disturb of sleep or appetite, and feeling of tiredness and poor concentration. Despite this interrelationship between anxiety, depression, and stress, anxiety and depression was not studied in Delta students as much as stress. Actually, there was a specific tool just to measure stress among dental students, which is dental environmental stress. So it will be more beneficial to measure these three parameters in Delta students in one scale. And here comes the role of DAS21 items. What is DAS21? Depression and anxiety and stress scale 21 item DAS was designed to measure these three parameters just on one comprehensive scale. It's, divi it's divided to three parts, seven questions to depression, seven for anxiety, and another seven for stress. These are the questions of DAS, and each question have four possible answers. Zero mean never applied to me, one mean sometimes applied to me, two to some degree it's applied to me, and three always or almost always applied to me. These questions are randomly arranged between depression and anxiety and stress. So how can we measure this? It's simple. So for each parameter, which is depression, anxiety, and stress, each numerical value are corresponded to some severity. For example, that's D, which means depression. If your results are between zero and nine, that's mean normal. If, uh, if these are between 10 to 30, mean mild, while 40 to 20, moderate, 21 to 27, severe, above 28, severe. It's the same goes to an anxiety and stress with different numerical value. After we measure each individual, we, we sum these results together and we put it at a person to give overview of the level of depression, anxiety and stress and the sample size of this population. It's a cross-sectional study. 150 students were invited to participate from Libyan International Medical University dental student, and the questionnaire was completed by 56 students. 14 students from the third year, 17 students from the fifth year, and 25 students from the fifth year, revealing response rate of 37 by 33 percent. And the result was actually quite shocking. Abnormal level of depression and anxiety and stress were observed. 54.3 depressed, 79.5 of students was had high anxiety, and 70.9% of them was stressed. From these percentages, there was severe and extremely severe score. For depression, there was 20% and anxiety 44% and stress 36.2%. Third-year dental students have shown higher stress percentages than anxiety and depression, while fourth and fifth year have more anxiety than depression or stress. In general, fifth-year dental students have higher anxiety and stress than 
fourth or third year by 13%. Also, female dental students show higher rate of depression than male dental students by a ratio of 2.7 to 1. Discussion. Of course, these values are alarming and also scary, but we have to also respect the confounding factor. Dental study is already crowded by lecture and requirement, but also there was quarantine and this study was done in exam time. And we also have to put the state that our country is going about, how electricity crisis is going on and also on. That's my also explain the differences between my results and another study was done in King Saud, Saudi Arabia University. Their, de their depression state was 55.9%, and anxiety was 66.8%, and stress was 45.7%. In my study, this was much higher than them. Also, third year of, Saudi, of, of King Saudi University has a higher depression and anxiety stress, while in Limu, the student has fifth year. This may contribute about that King Saudi University doesn't have comprehensive case nor BDS exams, which may explain why fifth year have higher rate of anxiety, depression, and stress. Limited until students show high level depression and anxiety stress with, the with respect to the confounding factor, but this level must be measured with another study and another researchers, and also the uh, method to reduce this stress and anxiety and depression must be applied as outdoor sport or psychological counseling. Uh, these parameters may reduce their academic performance. And um, these are my references. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Assalamu alaikum, doctors and colleagues. Welcome to my presentation. I'm Wasal Firjani, fifth year dental student at Libyan International Medical University. My presentation is a study about pain perception among orthodontic patients in Benghazi city. Patients usually experience pain during orthodontic treatment. This seems to be influenced by certain factors such as age, gender, previous pain experiences, stress, or anxiety and type of appliances they wear. Pain experience might affect patient's motivation. So the most common question asked by the patients before, started, before starting any treatment, am I going to have pain? Once orthodontic force, forces are applied on teeth, a series of inflammatory actions occur at the paradental tissues. Bone is resorbed via osteoclast on the compressive side and laid down via osteoblast on the tension side. Leukocytes release inflammatory mediators such as bradykinine, prostaglandins, and cytokines, for example, interleukine 1 and tumor necrosis factor. Bradykinine and prostaglandin bind to sensory endings and generate pain. The aim of this study is to explore pain and discomfort experience among patients undergoing orthodontic treatment with fixed appliances after different time interval and procedure. The study group consisted of 74 patients, 17 of them were males, whereas 57 were females. Their age ranged from 13 to 27 years with the mean age of 19 years. All the patients were wearing fixed appliances. Modified McGill pain questionnaire with visual analog scale was modified and translated to Arabic and distributed to orthodontic patients. Chi-square test was used for descriptive analysis. Statistic analysis was done by SPSS version 10. Here's the picture of McGill pain questionnaire. The questionnaire consisted of uh, if there is pain or not the type of appliances they wear, what triggers pain, the side of pain, how they feel pain, pain scale out of 10, the onset and duration of pain, the intensity, if it has been decreased over time or not, and if they took any medications to, the re to relieve the pain or not. From total number of patients, 87.7% .7 of them have suffered from pain, whereas 12.2% of them have not. 
The pain scale was mainly 5 in 20.9% of patients and least 2 with 1.5% and 9 with 1.5%. The onset of pain started immediately after insertion of the wire with 57, 56.7% and after six hours of insertion with 34.4% and after 12 hours of insertion with only 6%. The duration of pain described in 40% of patients, they, their pain lasted for two days and with 4% with the least, the pain lasted for four days. Only 26.6% of patients needed medications to relieve the pain. The, pa the pain description mostly described by patients as pressure with 55.5%, followed by headache with 39.1%. Chewing was the most pain trigger with 45.9%, followed by biting with 41.8%. The side of pain felt mainly anteriorly with 29.7%, followed by all teeth with 28.3%. This is the first study which was done among Libyan population. The sample size was small and the gender was not considered. However, a previous study was done by Aslihan et al, which, has, which was published in the European Journal of Orthodontics. They have found that there is no significant differences in terms of gender. Only 50% of patients wearing intraoral elastics and headgear agreed that braces aren't painful, among those interviewed by Egolf et al in 1990. In our study, in our study, 26.6% took medications to relieve pain. However, the micropulse vibration device as an alternative that what was provo provided by Wendy, who performed a randomized control study, and they found that this technique significantly lowered the pain scores. Pain depends on factors such as age, gender, individual pain threshold, the magnitude of force applied, present emotional state, stress, cultural differences, and previous pain experiences. This study was subjective. The diameter was uh, uh, the diameter of initial wires and type of appliances such as conventional or self-ligating was not considered, which might affect our findings. In conclusion, the present findings provide useful information in relation to the likelihood of pain, discomfort, and side effects for patients undergoing orthodontic treatment. However, further studies are needed to assess to change assess the change over time of specific impacts related to wearing of orthodontic appliances. Thank you for listening, and these are my references. Good morning, everyone. I hope we're doing well. Today, I'm Asi Shemish. I'm going to talk about a study done by Dr. Abir Hani. The study titled is Dental Implant Maintenance Experience, Tasting, Knowledge, and Clinical Practice of Living Implant Clinician. Let's start. And this is study. The living dental implant clinician from different backgrounds and different knowledge will be surveyed in order to assess the routine approach of dental implant maintenance. We all know that dental implant is the best option in replacing missing teeth, also the most expensive one. Proper oral hygiene is very important during the healing phase of the implant to prevent the movement of inflammatory response and those inflammatory response may interrupt the ST integration of implant will and may lead to implant failure. Routinely provide patients with dental implant oral hygiene maintenance protocol to ensure the longevity of the treatment to provide to for long-term survival and to prevent pre-implant infection. Dental implant oral, hy oral hygiene protocol should be assessed before surgery, immediately after surgery, and following for the, the completion of prosthetic phase of treatment and also in all maintenance appointments. 
Little implant connection are routinely responsible and completely responsible for the continuity of patient education and maintenance of dental implants. We should note that uh, the survey paper is held, was held in Tripoli in June 2018. The 35 item paper surveys, uh, especially done for this study, were commercially uh, sampled and submitted by volunteers in Tripoli. The response rate was only 63.33. The, the result shows that the practice or the year, years of experience of those clinicians range from five years up to 15 years. Unfortunately, the result shows that only 36.8 of them have not trained in classroom and clinic on implant care while attending dental school and the other half didn't practice in any continuing education courses after graduating from dental school. And also the study revealed that clinicians who should schedule implant patients for maintenance and oral hygiene reinforcement regularly are only 10% of them. Schedule the patient after the first week of implant and the majority of them, 16, 60, sorry, 16 uh, percentage of them schedule implant patients for maintenance appointment after three months. Why those numbers are appointment and what's reflecting, uh, what those, does those numbers reflect in reality? Let's talk about this picture here. First of all, after seeing your patient after two weeks or one week after the placement of the implant, let your patient ask any question about how, how to maintain this implant in place, how to clean around your implant, how to deal with it. First of all, after <clears throat> asking your patient to come to the next appointment after two weeks or one week after implant placement, as shown here, you show her or him how to brush and clean around his implant. First picture so, uh, shows using a co uh, cotton tub to clean around the healing button gently or using a gauze with antibacterial solution just to clean around your dental prosthesis or your dental implant gently without using any excessive force that may lead to implant failure or uh, interrupting the integration of your implants. As you can see in this picture, this is what happens if you neglect the, and the maintenance appointment and the maintenance and reinforcement appointment of your dental implant patients. As you can see here, the patient neglect dental or neglect oral hygiene practice at home and black accumulation, uh, some debris accumulation around the heel above the which is very bad. And next, the study results also show that uh, regarding the maintenance of, of dental implant after delivery of prosthesis, unfortunately, only 13% of those clinicians schedule their patient every three months for maintenance after prosthetic delivery. Why those numbers are important? Regarding that your patient is cleaning, at, cleaning his dental implant at home and practice oral hygiene, protocols at home. Patients still come not to clean all hidden areas of his dental implant or around his dental prosthesis. Some other professional level of scaling and the cleaning should be carried in the dental clinic. That's why taking us to the next topic, which is regarding ultrasonic scalers and scaling instruments in this study shows that most clinicians prefer plastic scalers because stainless steel scalers are not kind to uh, the surface and not recommended. And now let's talk numbers. Only 15, only uh, 52.6 of the clinician perform supragingival instrumentation when they are called their patients for the regular checkup and regular maintenance appointments. And the other, which is 35.2, perform subgingival instrumentation around the implant, which is very important to uh, perform this implant and perform this story scaling and deep cleaning around the implant because as I said before, cleaning at home is not just 
Now, it's not enough for you to identify the patient. There is hidden areas the patient cannot clean. And let's talk some about something else that some clinicians in this study prefer plastic scalers and use toughly coated scalers just to get the most effectiveness of the scaling of process and without damaging the surface of the dental implant. At the end, and my own conclusion, we conclude on three important points from this study. First of all, continuous education and academic pro programs about dental implant maintenance should be implanted in both both undergraduate and postgraduate levels. Second thing is dental implant maintenance and dental implants maintenance and oral hygiene reinforcement of the dental implant patient is very mandatory regarding their need and regarding their prosthetic delivery at the end of the treatment. If each patient should be scheduled for dental implant maintenance and oral hygiene reinforcement scheduled regularly after implant placement. Uh, and the last point is uh, oral hygiene protocol at home is not enough for dental implant patient. Professional scaling and the cleaning around the implant is still needed and still must be done by the professional dental implant clinician and its own responsibility to schedule their patients for this future appointments. I hope you like my presentation for today. Thank you and thank you for watching. This is my reference. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. Today, me, Sara Salahuddin Bishwagir, and my colleague Fatma Nasser Hitaj, fifth year dentistry students in Libyan International Medical University, will be presenting our research with the title of Dental Anxiety Impact on Oral Health Related Quality of Life a cross-sectional study in Benghazi, Libya. Our presentation consists of, first, an overview, the aims of our study, the materials and methods used, the results in discussion, the conclusion and recommendations, and finally, the acknowledgement. Starting off with an overview about dental anxiety or dental phobia. It is defined as the patient's response to stress that is specific to dental situ situations. Despite technological advances in modern dentistry, dental anxiety and fear of pain associated with dentistry remains common. It has been ranked the fifth among common fears in a general population. Also, the prevalence of dental anxiety has been the subject of innumerable surveys for many decades, as it varies from 5 to 21% of the general population, depending on the methods of measurement used. Dental phobia has several consequences. First, individuals with high levels of dental anxiety tend to have regular visiting habits. This creates a vicious dynamic cycle in which the fear of dental treatment lower the use of dental health and oral health diseases reinforce each other. Second, anxiety or phobia has a negative effect on the dentist-patient relationship, as it can be the reason behind failure or complications for many dental procedures. Next, higher levels of anxiety results in medical complications due to stress, such as syncope and cardiovascular accidents. Dental anxiety has many emotional and mental and psychosomatic consequences as it interferes with the patient's individual well-being and substantially affects their oral health-related quality of life. High dental anxiety has been found to be consistent, is consistently linked to poor oral health-related quality of life for many patients in several countries, including the United Kingdom, Germany, Switzerland, and India, based on previous research. Regarding oral health-related quality of life, it characterizes an individual's perception of how oral health influenced their life quality. This concept received a lot of attention from psychologists and different instruments has been developed to measure it. There's lack of information regarding dental anxiety and its effect on oral health-related quality of life in the developing countries and in Arab countries. So the aim of our study was to collect data on the prevalence of dental anxiety 
and its impact on oral health-related quality of life among adults in Benghazi city. Our basic research design included a cross-sectional study involving a questionnaire of a randomly selected sample of Benghazi population. We distributed the questionnaire by means of Google Forms online and print and handouts on September 2020. The inclusion criteria were uh, people aged 16 to 75 and Benghazi residents. Our questionnaire consisted of two parts. The first part collected demographic data of all subjects, those including the age, the gender, the educational level, and the smoking habits. It also collected data uh, regarding the dental visiting habits and the sleeping quality the night before visiting a dentist. The second part collected information regarding the dental anxiety level. We used the Arabic verified version of the modified data anxiety scale. This scale consists of five questions regarding the anxiety the day before visiting a dentist, anxiety in the waiting room, anxiety before getting a filling, anxiety before getting scaling, and anxiety before getting an anesthetic injection. Each question ranges from one to five. Reproduced total scores ranging from five uh, representing not anxious at all to 25 representing extremely anxious. The cutoff point was made at 19 and above, indicating dental phobia. Uh, the, we, used, we also used the Arabic verified version of the oral health impact profile to measure the oral health related quality of life. This scale consists of five items and it collected uh, information regarding if the participant has felt any difficulty in chewing their foods, if they had felt any pain, if they had felt uncomfortable about their appearances, if they had felt like, if they had any alterations in their taste perceptions, and if they had felt any difficulty doing their regular jobs in the last 12 month period due to oral or dental problems. Uh, the scores ranges from zero, represented never, to four, represented very often, and higher scores indicated poorer oral health-related quality of life. Before starting off with the results, I'd like to clarify that the collected data were, were entered into spreadsheet and they were statistically analyzed. We used the independent sample t-test to detect the difference in means between two groups, where one-way ANOVA was used to detect the difference in several groups. The chosen level of significance was p-value less than 0.05. The total sample size was 717, uh, where 430 participants responded online, and 287 participants responded by printed handouts. The mean age was 28.34 years. Female participants re represented 64% of the total study group, while male participants represented 36% of the total study group. Our results revealed that 114 participants suffered from dental phobia. Those represented 16% of the total study population. Also, this table shows the mean of the dental anxiety level, which is 12.23. The, uh, the phobic male participants represented 11% of the total male population, while the public female participants represented a higher percentage of 15% of the total female population. Uh, regarding the variation between male and female according to their dental anxiety levels, uh, we can see that the females had a higher means of 13.02, and the difference of males to females was statistically significant as the p-value was less than 0.05. 
Next, this table shows the age groups included in our study. Here we can see that participants aged less than 20 years old had the highest digital anxiety mean of 30.35, but the difference between age groups was statistically insignificant because the p-value was more than 0 0.05. Moving on to the educational level effect on dental anxiety. Here we divided the participants to three groups according to their degree level. We can see that participants with only secondary degree level had the highest dental anxiety mean of 12.47. And the difference between the groups was statistically significant as the p-value was less than 0 0.05. After ANOVA, a post hoc test was done to determine the significance level between each individual two groups. And it's revealed that uh, the people, uh, participants with secondary level degree and participants with master degrees level uh, differed significantly. Uh, next, we have the smoking effect on dental anxiety. Here we can see that most of our participants were non-smokers and they had the highest dental anxiety mean. Although the difference between smokers, non-smokers, and previous smokers was statistically insignificant as the p-value was less than 0.5. 0 0.05, which means that the smoking habits has no significant effect on the dental anxiety scores. Moving on to the sleeping quality the night before visiting the dentist. We can see that participants who suffered from a lot of stress and couldn't sleep the night before had the highest dental anxiety mean of 19.02. And the difference between the groups was significant as the p-value was more than 0.05. A post hoc test was done and it's revealed, uh, and it's revealed that participants who sleep normally, those who suffer from little stress and then proceed to sleep, and participants who suffer from a lot of stress and couldn't sleep the night before visiting the dentist all differed significantly from each other. Now that I've discussed the demographic data and the sleeping quality effects on dental anxiety, I'll leave you with my colleague, Fatma Hadash, to talk about the remaining results. Hello, everyone. Starting to discuss the result of dental visiting habits and dental anxiety. Like what we see here, the highest response was for individual visiting the dentist only when they feel pain. But the highest mean was for individual who didn't go to the dentist and only take medication. According to ANOVA, the p-value are less than, less than 0 0.5, which means this is statistically significant. Also, the post hoc test was done, and there is a significant variation between patient routinely go to checkup and patient only when they feel pain and patient when, which only take a medication and avoid visiting the dentist. And it was significant. So then the related dental, uh, dental anxiety and oral health related equality, when we divide our participant to two groups, public and non-public group, according to the modified dental anxiety scale and related to the oral health impact profile, we found that there is the highest mean was for public group and it was less than B value, less than 0 0.5 and it was statistically significant. Now, discussion regarding dental anxiety. This study is carried out to assess the dental anxiety level in Benghazi. So the total mean was 12.23. And when we compare it with other study, we found it similar to study conducted in the Saudi Arabia and India. The prevalence of dental phobia between the population was 16%, which is more than studies conducted in the UK, but it less than studies conducted in the US by whites. Starting to discuss the result of our study, which shows there is a significant variation between females and males according to their mean, and it's in agreement to the analysis of oral health survey in the UK. Next, the smoking habit, where no significant variation between the groups, in contrary to the analysis of the oral health survey, survey by Newton in the UK. Also, the age group, where no significant variation between them, in contrary to the finding studies by Anshari and Fayyad, which has reported that older individuals have a lower dental anxiety than younger individuals. 
Regarding educational level, there is a significant variation between highly educated and secondary level educated in agreement with the US National Health Survey, which has reported that primary or secondary level educated have a higher dental anxiety than highly educated patients. Moving to the phobic patient or individuals that have high modified dental anxiety scale score are less likely to visit dental clinic for routine of checkup. And this is supported early finding in adults, dental health survey in the UK and US national health survey. Moving to the open-ended question that we did in our survey, asking about the reason that scares you from your dentist or from visiting the dentist, the highest percent was 22.2 for anxiety toward injection. And it's when we when we share about it and we found that they're in, in it's in finding similar to the Dinash adult in Saudi Arabia, the fo followed by fear of pain, which is scored 18.1. The third highest percent was for scared or anxiety toward sound of rotary dental drills, 13.5. Other reasons as fear of, of tooth loss due to extraction according to treatment plan or by accident. Past, past bad, bad past experience, dentist attitude, and proper sterilization, especially nowadays because of COVID-19 and expense. It's an important reason too. Regarding to oral health related equality, as I said before, we divided to two groups, phobic and non-phobic group. And we compared, when we compared, we find the relationship between oral health related equality and dental anxiety. That means high dental anxiety associated with low oral health related equality, and the difference was statistically significant. Despite the limitation of this study, the sample was consists of population in more women and lack of information regarding the annual income. We conclude that dental anxiety differs significantly with gender, education, sleeping quality, and dental visiting. And more importantly, it's associated with oral health related equality. So we know now that there is a relation between oral health related equality and dental anxiety. Identification of patients suffering from dental anxiety is important now. And to get him a proper management treatment plan and avoid any negative experience. We conclude some ways to manage those patients as environmental change to friendly environment, patient control during the treatment by stopping the, patient, stopping the, the, the treatment by raising his hand when he feels pain, Distraction, the, the, the instrument voice voice by playing amusing to making the patient more relaxed. New dental techniques as uh, dental inject, dental vibe injection comfort, uh, comfort system to painless injection. Pharmacologic management as we use a conscious sedation during the procedure or mild sedative agent the night before visiting the dentist. Finally, for further studies, the development of the study and more research with large sample size should be carried out to further assess those impact of Libya and Libya, sorry. Finally, we would thank Dr. Rabia al Huni and Mr. Tofik al for his statistical analysis. This is our reference. Thank you for your attention. My study to cover the knowledge, attitudes, and the behavior of dental patients attending Limo Dental Clinic during the outbreak of COVID 19. Under supervision, Dr. Rafa Kokofi and Dr. Abdul Manam Abdulmi. My presentation contains firstly many introduction, materials, and method results. And last of the uh, presentation in conclusion. Firstly, uh, the purpose of my study, uh, which focused to assist the patient knowledge, behavior, and attitude towards COVID 19 while attending and being treated at Limo Dental Clinic. An introduction of simple information about the coronavirus, uh, the COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, also uh, known as coronavirus disease, going global pandemic of coronavirus disease 20, uh, 2019, COVID 19, caused by severe acute respiratory coronavirus, uh, respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, or other name of coronavirus. Uh, 
uh, will nourish the attitudes and behavior about COVID-19 among the dental patients are very important issue uh, for dental health care provided to restore defects in knowledge and change behavior for two important, uh, two important reasons, uh, better in prevention and self-protection. Material and the method, it is cross-section study. 70 questionnaires were distributing among the uh, patients attending the new dental clinic. Uh, the questionnaire can uh, include it in, in two parts. First part, the linear information of the patient, demographic data, age, gender, occupation, and education level of participants. Second part, the linear questionnaires include 22 questions regarding research. Uh, the the questions Helena can uh, the questionnaires in three can have three pages. Uh, we'll get some in the clinic. first page can talk about the knowledge of the patient, second part the behavior of the patient, third part on attitude of the patient. Then the collecting link data or or results can add here. Uh, total, كيف ما حكينا قلنا إنهم كانوا uh, distributing uh, about any uh, on the seventy patients who can't really enroll in this study. Uh, will questionnaires uh, return to uh, for uh, for me and answered with one hundred uh, response rate. Can a patient متعاونين وبرضو كان focus ال uh, distribute. Uh, على البيشنت بالتحديد. آه طبعا كيف ما حكينا ان متقسمه الى ثري بارتس اللي فيرست بارت اللي هو توك اباوت النولج. ذا فيرست كواتشنز توك اباوت ان البيشنت اجري ان بريزنت اوف كوفيد 19 اور نوت. الانسر او الهاي ليفل انسر كانت uh, كيف نشوفه هون عند الديموغرافيك. إن ال كيف كانت ال choice إن تعت ال questions agree disagree let me agree ولا ما agree كيف ما نشوفه هنا ال high level هي ال agree حوالي twenty seven patients ااا إن agree to COVID nineteen existed exists ااا whereas إن eight patients disagree present of COVID nineteen Uh, second uh, question is talk about in the, the, the information about the coronavirus source and uh, for uh, any where any way. But I'm kind of anti multiple choice in the radio, TV, social media, someone will have key worker. Can I the most uh, answer in the social media and the TV? About 20, uh, 28 patients and 27 participants. And the information regarding COVID 19 uh, on the social media and the TV. After that, we will go other questions. And we will ask you about the knowledge. Of uh, the other questions can be the cause of COVID 19. Uh, cannot answer uh, 100% about 100% of the virus. After the transmission of COVID-19, how only 62 participants in the COVID-19 by touching, coughing, and sneezing. But I can't answer the way that I can give the graphic data and the touching, or the coughing, or the sneezing, or all the mention. Cannot the high level answer the all mention. بعدها جينا حكينا على السيمتومز اللي هما الكوفيد 19 طبعا كان التشويز من موست كومن سيمتومز اللي هما الفيفر الديفيكالت اوف بريثينج والفيفر والكوفينج اند سنيزينج وكانت الجدا او الانسر اوف بيشنت اور اوف ذا اباب اللي هي اباوت 59 participants in the symptoms of COVID-19 in a difficult keep me in the breathing, fever, coughing, and sneezing. And the other questions talk about people prone to infection, our most common people uh, for any uh, infection by COVID-19. 
most people اللي هم chronic patient with chronic disease uh, and elderly people بالنسبة uh, للانسر of the, this question كانت بالتالي children chronic disease emergency people ولا I don't know كانت الانسر كيف ما حكينا او الهاي ليفل chronic disease about uh, 36 uh, participants will elderly people about uh, 27 uh, participant one the last uh, question is about knowledge and incubation period uh, of uh, in, in the coronavirus disease can uh, I ask you the choice of uh, this questions very heavy who can answer high level of questions about seven to uh, 14 days an incubation period of COVID-19 الريبورت الثاني اللي هو يحكي على ال behavior of the patient uh, إنه هو wearing gloves or not wearing or في أي wear في أي مكان في المكان ولا في نص المكان ولا wearing a mask the watching the hand uh, برضو social distance المحافظ عليها ولا لا هذين الأسئلة اللي كان included في في البارت هذا جو لا فيرست كوتشنز اللي كيف يحكي على ان البيشنت وينج ذا لابس اور نوت شفنا ان اباوت 26 بيشنت ان هو ديزنت بريفير تو وير جلوفز وبالنسبه لل وبرضه طبعا هذه الهاي ليفل كوتشنز انسر ال And second high level question is cannot and who wear gloves just uh, during going out in the public. Wearing mask about 24 participants wearing mask only when going out in the public. Uh, watching the hand about 60 to, uh, 63 participants washing the hand after touching anything. Uh, بعدها نجو للو uh, using the hand gel or not twenty uh, eight patient using hand gel when touching anything uh, the last uh, question كان ال social distance إن هم محافظين عليها uh, ولا لا كانت ال إجابة أو الأنصر uh, إن thirty uh, seven بعد thirty uh, seven Participants confirmed to maintain social distance can have a high level percentage here uh, 52 percent. This third part of the questionnaire is the attitude of the patient. And who was that? Of the start of this part. Visiting the dentist or not uh, during the COVID-19, uh, during the COVID-19, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, about uh, 53 patients visiting the dentist, they, uh, whereas in, uh, 20 patients, uh, 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 sorry, And 53 patients visiting the dentist. So, how do you count the Ijaba? Count the Ijaba? Yes or no? Shifna and yes, count the high level of the answer. Second part or second questions talk about the cause of visiting the dentist. Canon Jabati in 2K. Tooth K, well, any pain, well, uh, dental prosthesis, well, extraction or restoration, or another reason. Can the most cause uh, for visiting the patient to be pain or tooth K? Uh, and about uh, the number of the patient answer uh, this or uh, answered 20 patients. But uh, other, other, uh, The questions talk about and now we're wearing a mask or or any empty about 31 uh, and the patient wear uh, a mask 
نجول الاذر كوشن اللي هو توك اباوت ان التمبريتشر ميجرمنت ان ديتال كلينيك ان ديمو ديتال كلينيك اور نوت الانسر كانت ان الانسر ان التمبريتشر ميجرت ان ديتال كلينيك اباوت 48 بارتيسيبنت جاوب يعني انسرت ان التمبريتشر ميجرت ان ديتال كلينيك Uh, وبعد عندي يوزت في الكحول سبري about in 16 patient or participant use of كحول سبري when entering the clinic يعني ان ال ال dental clinic او ليمو dental clinic use كحول سبري for patient uh, during an interview يعني خلال يعني خلال تواجدهم في ال في الكلينيك بعد عندي ان هم ماشيين على Universal Guideline of Infection Control this if the Limodita Clinic or not and answer about 38 patient uh, or participant in the, in the clinic the following Universal Guideline for Infection Control بعد ها نجول ال other questions أو other questions talk about على social distance في ال في carrying out ولا waiting room ولا في reception area هل هما يعني confirmed or not about إن يعني العيادة مواظبة على الشيء هذا ولا لا ال about thirty six participant إن The clinic or social confirmed that the social distance was being carried out for list and waiting room and keep my goodness reception area. The social distance being had to do with WHO. بعد ها إن هما ال dentist اللي في ال limo dental clinic was were surgical gone or not? وكانت الأنصار إن هما أو أباوت أن حاو يشوفوا البيشنت أن هم يوير سيرجيكال جاون إن ذا كلينيك أور نت أباوت 38 بارتيسيبنت كونفرم ذات دينتست وير سيرجيكال جاون إن ذا كلينيك كونكلوجن أوف ذيس ستادي أو ذيس برزنتيشن إن ذيس ستادي إن نولج أوف ذا بيشنت كيف ما شفنا في ال بالنسبة للبرزنتيش والانفورميشن اللي عند البيشنت كانت was satisfactory regarding the present will cause كيف ما حكينا و transmission symptoms and high risk groups بالنسبة للbehavior and attitude of participant كيف ما شفنا في ال في ال answer of the patient with percentage اللي عرضناها توا انها not optimal regarding self protection and prevention against COVID-19 وأن ال patient attitude and behavior toward COVID-19 need to reinforcement كيف ما شفنا إن هما أكثر information اللي وخلينا عن طريق different عن طريق social media first and the TV فنحنا نديرو reinforcement عن طريق reinforcement عن طريق ال social media كيف ما حكينا إن Facebook ولن وال وال Twitter and عن طريق ال TV ال diet Uh, uh, that last, that's it. Thank you for listening to me, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome to my our presentation today. Uh, my name is Maryam Abdelrahim Nashad. My presentation today will talk about a post-operative tooth sensitivity after composite resin restoration under Supervisor Dr. Rafiq al -Kouafi. The objectives. Introduction, the aim of objective material and method, inclusion and exclusion criteria, result, discussion and conclusion. The introduction, this study investigates the post-operative sensitivity of resin composite restoration and relation with the isolation, extension of caries, the type of material used, the type of cavity preparation, occlusal adjustment, finishing and polishing methods. Hana overview basita ala al tooth sensitivity or al post-operative hypersensitivity. Al post-operative hypersensitivity, it can be defined as a pain in the tooth associated with the mastication within or 
with hot or cold and sweet stimuli occur in one week or more than one week after restoration. The pain during the chewing is considered from the post-operative hypersensitivity. Related to what? Related to the polymerization shrinkage and the gap. The polymerization shrinkage and the gap between the tooth and the tooth and the restoration or the dentine and the composite. This gap during the mastications is filled with the fluid and this fluid will fall down to the dentinal tubule and will cause sensitivity or will cause the pain or cause the pain. The aim of objective, the aim of objective to identify the cause of post-operative sensitivity and how it can be avoided. Material and method. This is the prospective study investigated tooth sensitivity after routine method in Limo Dental Clinic uh, in Libya International Medical University. And the data uh, will be collected pre or intraoperatively, or the data has gone postoperatively. The data that has gone pre or intraoperatively, the age, the gender, the tooth number, the type of cavity preparation, the isolation technique, the type of material used, the composite application technique, the uh, method of isolation or technique of isolation. And the data will be collected postoperatively. After one week, which is about the sensitivity test, the sensitivity test is about the air dryness test, and to restore the tooth, of course, the adjustment. Here, in the table, it will explain the details I have told you about the collected data, the pre and intraoperatively. This table, there are things that we call pre and intraoperatively, like, for example, the gender, the age, the tooth number, the type of cavity preparation, the isolation technique, the type of phase, and the type of liner if present. The type of material used, the composite application technique, finishing and polishing. This data is will be collected pre or intraoperatively. And then we have two data that will be postoperatively, which is like the occlusal adjustment and the sensitivity test. How we said the sensitivity test is about an air dryness test after one week from the restoration. The inclusive criteria: the patient age from 14 to 16 years. The tooth is free from any clinical evidence, meaning minimal bites or minimal periodontal disease. It is an asymptomatic tooth, vital tooth, or a tooth with occlusion. The exclusive criteria: the patient not come to the follow-up. Of course, this is the most important thing. Exclusive criteria: the patient with a medical disorder, such as, for example, the patient with depression, severe anxiety patient, Parkinson's disease, or another exclusive criteria, which is the teeth with bulbitis, periodontal disease. Direct or indirect pulp capping, the endodontic treated teeth. These are all from the exclusive criteria. The tooth wear in any way, like cracked tooth or a tooth with a history of trauma. The patient who is doing bleaching within three months and a tooth that is activated by the orthodontic treatment or abutment tooth. These are all from the exclusive criteria. Results: The total of my patient can be 39 patients. The enrolled in this study can be 29. But they are the completed data. This study can be result in that only 31% of the patient can be sensitive to the follow-up, or 31% of the patient can be sensitive to the follow-up. Uh, all of the 29 patients were restored by the same material used, while the isolation technique can be in some cases by the cotton roll and high vacuum suction, while another, all another cases can be done by the rubber dam. And the percentage to the results between a total tooth and the sensitive tooth, a total tooth can be حوالي a sensitive tooth. Sorry, from the total tooth can be حوالي واحد وثلاثين في المية. Seven from twenty nine patients or twenty nine teeth can be seven tooth pass restored by basal liner. One tooth from the seven teeth can be pass sensitive. No high point found at the follow-up. 
appointment where a post-operative sensitivity was found in the females more than males. بنسبة هذه طبعا برسنتج توضح ال sensitive tooth between the female and the male. The female was about 56 and the males were about 44. هنا ال total tooth كيف ما قلنا كان or total tooth will be completed data كان 29 nine teeth بس كان or nine patient بس كانوا sensitive at the follow up appointment after one week وال patient age كانوا حوالي 14 لل 34 سنة وكانوا more in the females أنا هنا دير زي المختصر على ال nine tooth اللي كان sensitive شن هن كان بالضبط يعني مثلا هنا كان عندنا 5 teeth molar molar class 1 أنا حددت بالتفصيل يعني مثلا إن عندنا هنا 2 teeth uh, كان lower second molar و 1 tooth كانت lower first molar 1 tooth كانت upper second molar و 1 tooth كانت upper first molar التوتل وانتع lower molars كان حوالي 3 teeth lower molar و 2 teeth كان upper molar total لل Posterior teeth or molar teeth, class one, can have five teeth. تمام. بالنسبة لل anterior teeth, can have four teeth. Anteriorly, بالتفصيل two upper central incisal, or can have class three, one lower canine, can have class five, one upper canine, or can have class three. Discussion. هذا برضو جدول أنا موضحة فيه. The type of cavity preparation and number of tooth. يعني four teeth كان in class one. هذين the sensitive tooth طبعاً. Four teeth كان in class one. و the one tooth كانت class كانت class two. و three teeth كانت class three. ما كانش في ولا حالة class four. One tooth كانت class five. هذين كلهن the sensitive tooth بالتفصيل في جدول ملخص. Discussion. I have compared it with other results than before. In my study, it says that the sensitive teeth are more in the females more than males, and it gives the same result in the study than before in Brazil. Sorry, in New York, in 2014. في study تانية كانت تقول in my study كانت تقول إن teeth sensitive. More common in molar class one. وما كانت تعطي the same result في study done before في البرازيل في 2007 في سبتمبر 2007. The study هذه كانت تقول إن class two كان more than another classes. بس in my study كانت تقول إن class one molar كانت أكثر من another classes. وفي study تانية كانت في جوان في 2000 كانت تقول إن the more sensitive teeth كان in class three. وكانت لم تتوافق in my study in my study كانت تقول إن the more common molar class one conclusion this result and conclusion of this study are in the form of small number of participate and it will be continuous until the adequate number of participate in is researched to get more reliable results. Uh, my conclusion, the post-operative sensitivity can be high in the patient. The isolation technique can be by cotton roll and high vacuum suction. Can uh, be sensitive more can be isolated by the cotton roll and high vacuum suction on the rubber dam. The rubber dam can be sensitive than the اللي دم باي كوترول اند هاي فاكيوم سكشن الابليكيشن اوف بيزل لاينر ديدنت اليمينيت البوست اوبراتيف تو سنسيتيفيتي والبوست اوبراتيف سنسيتيفيتي از مور كومن ان ذا يونج بيشنت اند ذس از ماي ريفرنسز اند ثانك يو فور اتنشن هلو نوك ماي نيم از ويدا ديفي I'm a fifth-year dentistry student in the Libyan International Medical University in Benghazi. I'm glad to have this opportunity to talk to you about a very important topic, which is home isolation and nutritional management of COVID-19 patients. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to define coronavirus and also differentiate between common concepts used in this regard. You should also have a background on home isolation how long should individuals be isolated in homes? How should they be taken care of nutritionally? And when can they be let go from isolation? So starting with a definition, 
Coronavirus disease, which is also known as COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by a new type of coronaviruses known as SARS-CoV-2, which is Severe Acute Respiratory uh, Syndrome Coronavirus 2. This new type of coronaviruses has caused a dilemma for many healthcare systems and also public healthcare units and the problem of having a great number of patients over short periods of time. When speaking of corona, you cannot not have heard about uh, quarantine, social distancing, and isolation. Unfortunately, these three terms tend to be used interchangeably by some individuals. And even though they all serve a greater purpose of reducing the risk of transmission of infection, they are completely different, uh, different entities. The first one is quarantine. It's basically the separation of a person or a group of people who may have been exposed to a communicable disease, but are not yet symptomatic, meaning they haven't developed any symptoms of the disease. In quarantine, we separate them from other uh, people who haven't been exposed to the infection to reduce the possibility of the transmission risk. Quarantine can either be voluntary, as so many people do, or it could be compelled such as it is the case in the policy of some countries when having uh, travelers from other countries coming to visit. Uh, on the other side, social distancing is the remaining out of congregate settings. These include anywhere that, where there are mass gatherings, such as shopping centers, cinemas, banks, and etc. Uh, it also involves maintaining a distance from other people when it's uh, possible, usually two meters. As moving on to our topic of the day, which is isolation. It differs in being uh, and representing the separation of a person or a group of people who are known or believed to be infected with a communicable disease from other people who are not. So, uh, as we've said, it's to reduce the risk of the, the transmission of the infection. And uh, as well as quarantine, it could be uh, voluntary or compelled as well. And also, uh, isolation could either take place in hospital settings or in homes. Here, we will focus on home isolation of COVID-19 patients. Which people uh, should be isolated in homes? It's basically those who are well enough to receive care at homes and also have the, pro the appropriate conditions to help them. The appropriate conditions include having an appropriate caregiver at home, which is someone who could look after them and their basic needs. And also they should have access to food and other personal uh, necessities, such as personal protective equipment, with a minimum of a mask and gloves. They should also have a separate bedroom and a separate bathroom where they can stay in use while being isolated. Finally, they should not be living with any household members who may be at an increased, at an increased risk of getting the infection. These include old age pe uh, people and also those with immunocompromising disease. Uh, the place where the an isolated individual would be staying should be well ventilated and also when their caregivers come to give them food or take away their, uh, their wastes, both of them should be wearing a mask and they shouldn't be getting into any sort of direct contact. Speaking of their caregivers, what about other people who live with them in the same house? So. Only those individuals in that house who are essential or necessary for taking care of the sick person should stay in that place, preferably. Others who are not or who may be at an increased risk of getting the infection should consider somewhere else to stay. Also, uh, if it's a must and they have to stay in the same house, 
The isolated person should stay in a separate bedroom and use a separate bathroom. Of course, it's unavoidable that they would, there would be uh, some shared surfaces, such as door handles, taps, and benches. These, uh, these shared surfaces should be, uh, should be uh, disinfected on a daily basis with either household disinfectant or, daily, uh, or diluted bleach solution. So should these people who live in the same house with the infected person be isolated as well or not? It basically depends. So if the patient is a confirmed case, anyone who lives with them or have been in close contact with should be isolated at home. Nonetheless, if you're waiting for your results, this will depend on the recommendations of the public health care units. So, how long should people stay in isolation? Whenever we hear the general public talking about home isolation, everyone's always thinking of two weeks. Actually, it's incorrect. According According to the Republic of South Africa and also the Australian government, the isolation period that's recommended for coronavirus disease patients has been reduced from two weeks to 10 days. Given that the patient is free of fever and that their symptoms have begun to improve. These 10 days, however, differ depending on the severity of the case. So if the patient is asymptomatic, meaning that they don't have any symptoms, such as fever, diarrhea, and others, they should be isolated for 10 days after the initial positive test. A positive test means a positive PCR test. If the patient is a mild case, they should be isolated for 10 days after the symptom onset. However, severe cases or those who may have been admitted to the hospital may have a longer periods of infectivity and it's recommended that they be isolated for 10 days after the, clinic, uh, the clinical stability has been achieved. So, moving on to the other part, which is the nutritional management of these patients. First of all, hydration, hydration, hydration. It's super important, everyone's talking about it. It's really important. So drinking water is vital, especially if the body is dehydrated. This could uh, occur due to having fever or the diarrhea or vomiting. When the body is dehydrated, it's, uh, it becomes more difficult to heal and the, immune, and, and the immune system finds it harder to function. Other liquids uh, may be consumed as well, uh, in addition to water. These include tea, uh, especially with honey, it could help with a cup. And also, if the patient feels that uh, they have difficulty eating or that they're uh, constantly having diarrhea or vomiting, they may consider uh, consuming electrolyte drinks such as coconut water, maple water, or a sports drink. The, patients, uh, the, the, the foods we recommend the patient consume are those that are rich in nutrients that support the immune system and help the body defend itself. These include uh, proteins, vitamin A, C, D, E, and also zinc. If you're having difficulty eating, it's preferable that you search for quality calories. These could be found in either getting your favorite smoothie or soup. You may also consider adding ginger to your favorite drink or soup uh, if you're having nausea. Example of good foods to eat while uh, being home isolated include orange juice, salmons, sardines, eggs, black beans, pepper, sweet ones, and also tuna, shrimps, uh, meats, vegetables, uh, vegetables, and also chickens. 
in addition to yogurt or peanut butter if you're searching for a dessert. Uh, so after knowing what you should have, what shouldn't you have? First of all, alcohol. It's dehydrating, it's bad for the immune system, it's bad for your general health. Please stay away from it. If you start feeling sick, avoid it and replace it with, and replace it with something that's more hydrating and healthier for your body. If you have gastrointestinal symptoms, there are some foods that you may want to avoid. These include those that are uh, a bit difficult to digest and others such as crackers, spicy foods, and acidic ones. Of course, this will completely depend on your symptoms. Some people have only respiratory symptoms without having gastrointestinal ones. Others don't, so again, it differs. When can people be let go from isolation? According to the latest WHO criteria for the release from isolation, there are two types of uh, criteria that countries may follow. Some may choose to follow uh, uh, one that's based on the symptomatic uh, on the symptoms of the patient. Others choose to follow uh, the PCR testing system. So the criteria for uh, releasing patients from isolation without the need for retesting is different for symptomatic patients and asymptomatic ones. For symptomatic ones, it's 10 days after symptom onset in addition to three other days without symptoms including without fever and without respiratory symptoms as well. For asymptomatic cases, as we've mentioned, it's 10 days after the positive test, uh, after the positive initial test that's been taken. As we've mentioned, other countries prefer to follow uh, a regime that's based on PCR testing. If so, the recommendation is two negative PCR tests, which are at least 24 hours apart. To sum it up, please keep in mind that isolation is the separation of someone who is known or believed to have the infection from other healthy people who don't to reduce the risk of the infection transmission. So uh, please don't forget the difference between quarantine and uh, isolation. People who stay in quarantine may have been exposed to the virus, but they are not proven to be infected. The recommended isolation uh, period is about 10 days. As we've mentioned, 10 days in general, it would depend on the severity of the case. Uh, also, it's on the condition that they are free of fever, uh, of they are free of fever and that their symptoms have begun to improve. Finally, nutrition is vital for your recovery. Please keep in mind that your body is a kingdom and nutrition is the queen. Uh, all of us know right now it's a bit difficult to be isolated in hospitals. So many people have to take care of themselves at their homes and be their own doctors. If so, please take care of yourself and follow the instructions we've provided. These are my references if you're further interested. Thank you so much for listening. Hello everyone, it's Suhail Firjani, dental intern at Limo. Fourth month ago, I was in a conversation with a medical colleague about how the dental student at the faculty are dealing with the pandemic of COVID-19. So I decided to start this research which talk about Libyan undergraduate dental student knowledge, perception, and attitude to COVID-19 and infection control practice.
Pandemic of COVID-19 has led to global crisis. The rapid surge of COVID-19 disease has not only raised the widespread of public health concern, but has collapsed the world economy. It has brought immense strain on social stability and global health system, particularly challenging the healthcare workers, including dental care professionals. It is therefore critical that prudent information should be relied to healthcare professionals in the time of this global crisis. This study investigated the knowledge and attitude of dental faculty toward the COVID-19 disease. It's a cross-sectional study that was conducted on the faculty at LEMO from the period of 15 August to 6 November of 2020. Sorry, an online survey questionnaire. Uh, an online survey questionnaire was administered through an electronic mail to the facu to faculty member. All the interns and undergraduate students were briefed about the context and purpose of this research. Uh, this study, uh, the study instrument, was divided into three parts. The first section of the survey constituted of demographic questions inquiring about the gender designation. The second included 13 research questions pertaining the participant knowledge regarding the COVID-19 disease, where yes or no options were provided for each question. The third part of the survey used a uh, question to uh, ascertain, uh, the, ascertain the attitude of the faculty member to where the COVID-19 disease on a five-point Likert scale that was devolved with balanced response and a neutral midpoint. The study tool assists the awareness of the faculty by probing about the mood of transmission, prevention, treatment, and management of patients in dental setting. The score of knowledge assessment range from 0 to 13. The cutoff point about uh, less than or more than 9. Uh, insufficient knowledge and greater than or equal to 9 for uh, sufficient knowledge. Attitude assessment was conducted and responses were documented on five-point Likert scale. About the results, the overall mean knowledge score of the, particip uh, of the participants was 9 plus or minus 2.13. Sufficient knowledge was exhibited by 75.2 percent of the respondents, whereas 24.8 displayed insufficient knowledge. The study participants show excellent knowledge for the stems for the stem that inquired about the mood of transmission, urban dental care procedures, significance of protect, personal protective equipment, while the patient procedure, uh, while examination, use of high volume section and WHO guidelines regarding oral hand hygiene. Uh, on the other hand, the knowledge was good to fair for the questions regarding the rubber dam isolation uses of mm, N20 on 95 masks for hand and dentistry extraction protocol, antibiotic use, and uh, screening. Uh, lastly, inadequate knowledge was evident in reaction of two questions. One, regarding safety of use of ultrasonic in COVID-19, suspected patients, and other was related to efficacy of or 1% of hydrogen peroxide mouthwash as a preference. The mean attitude score was in a range of 3.07 plus minus 0.13. Overall, faculty showed positive attitude when asked about fear of getting infected with COVID-19, treating all the emergency cases, seeking patients' relevant, med relevant medical history, asking about recent travel, checking body temperature, and avoiding procedure that calls aerosol protection. Conversely, the most negative attitude was noted when the faculty was asked if they would like to volunteer their service and support a medical team in case of a future emergency. All the results showed no significant correlation of gender uh, with both knowledge and attitude. The key result of the presented study, sorry, of the presented study may be used to create awareness on designing efficient infection control measures of COVID-19. 
But our limitation was the lower than expected response rate of the faculty and short period of data collection has led to comparatively smaller sample size. This pandemic has affected every aspect of life and caused many to be busy in making personal, official, and financial arrangements. This could have been resulted in selection bias and sampling error, which may limit the ability of to generalize our study. Future studies are required in this context. Fortunately, limo dentists were mindful of COVID-19 symptoms, mean of transmission, cross-infection control, and operative protocols practiced within the dental clinic. However, dentists exhibited inadequate knowledge about the sepsis dental, sepsis dental procedure that safeguard the dental staff and patients from COVID-19 in context of the current outbreak. Our reference are linked to this hyperlink if you are interested in them. So you can, uh, this poster are going to be printed out and you can have a look on it. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I would like to see you in other, other scientific, uh, other scientific uh, meetings. Thank you. <laughs>